Hi guys, in this video I'm going to try to make a cotton candy machine. The advantage of my device is that it uses only electricity, so we do not need for example a gas torch to heat the sugar. In this way we increase the time of use without having to change the gas canister. However, it is more difficult to make the machine, but this is not important. The main components for this project are a wood platform, a motor, in this case a shaded pole motor, a ceramic tile, a heating element, a switch, an aluminium cupcake cup and some steel nuts. A stainless steel ball, it is around 5 mm in diameter. A motor coupler to connect the bolt and the motor shaft like so. We also need a threaded rod that we are going to cut and a large bowl to hold back the sugar drops. To control the heating and the speed of the motor we will need two dimmers like this. More about this topic later. And now let's build. First, I attach the motor in the center of the wood platform. This microwave motor has special fastening that can be used for our purpose. After some measurements and marking, I drill two holes and with two bolts fix the motor to the base. And this is what we want. Then I had to drill some holes in the ceramic tile, the first one for the motor shaft, and the other three to fix the tile itself to the piece of the wood. Obviously I did other holes in the base, with the same distance from each other as those in the tile. I cut three equal length pieces from the threaded rod and with some nuts and washers fix them to the wooden platform in this way. The ceramic tile would hold the heating element, so I needed other two holes in order to let pass the connections. Putting some insulating tape on the tile will prevent the drill bit from sliding while drilling. The holes should be made by using a special ceramic drill bit, a thing that I didn't because I used a wall drill bit. Here is our achievement. Now let's talk about the electrical part. Surely you need at least one of these dimmers for temperature control. It has 220 volt AC as input. This one is from Aliexpress. The motor speed control is different. It depends on the type of motor, the circuit you need. So using a dimmer for a shaded pole motor is not a perfect solution. But because a better circuit for this motor is more complex and expensive, I use a dimmer anyway. We do not really need very accurate speed control. It's required only for a smooth start, avoiding the break of the cupcake cup. And because it's too easy to buy the dimmers and use them, I made two DIY circuits like this. One for the heating, one for the motor. Quick review of the circuit. The first part of the circuit is a zero crossing detector. Every time mains voltage goes to zero, the circuit has 5 volts on the output. These signals are read by the microcontroller allowing to synchronize the main sine wave with the signals that activate the third part of the circuit. In which part of the main sine wave to activate the third circuit is decided by the potentiometer. When the third part is enabled, the load absorbs power until the mains voltage goes to zero. Here we can see in yellow the signals that enable the third part and in blue the voltage on the load. Now let's continue by making the circuits. First by inserting all the components onto the board. Then soldering the leads. And at the end cutting the leads. The same process for the second one. Now what I'm going to make is this circuit that combines the dimmers, a very simple circuit. I want to warn you that it uses high voltage that can be deadly. Every circuit must have an enclosure. I'm going to use this one. The circuit that I made needs 5 volt power supply and I'm going to take it from an AC to DC adapter. Also we will need some wires, especially mains cable. So I extracted the 5 volt power supply and started the assembly process by cutting the container for mains cable inserting.
marked the case and drilled two holes for the potentiometers. Then I connected two wires to the heating element like so and cut them to the right length. Next I soldered two wires to the motor. It was time for cable management. I laid past motor and heater wires into the enclosure and with some glue I fixed the main wire to it. But first I added the switch. Then I prepared the wires for soldering by cutting the insulating material. Using some colophony as flux I soldered the wires. I connected the first dimmer to the motor and the second to the heating element. Then I soldered the mains cable to the dimmers and to the 5V adapter. After a little bit more soldering the circuit was done. Before going forward let's see if everything works fine. The first problem occurred during the first test. Due to the heat the tile cracked and the split continued to wide if heated further. To solve this problem we can put a tile in an aluminum container to hold the pieces together. So I drilled the container and made sure that heating element contacts didn't touch it. The second problem is that the coating on the tile didn't withstand high temperature and melted, ruining the heating element that sunk in this liquid. A really tragic event. To solve this problem I simply turned the tile upside down and this worked fine. The last thing I'm going to do is the cupcake modification. I cut a cupcake 16mm from the base. The upper part that I got was recycled. I cut it in order to obtain a sheet metal, then I strengthened it using a nail. From this piece I made a propeller that I put under this cup. So now let's see how to make the cup. I sharpened the nail and then with the hammer made two rows of holes. The prototype cup was higher and had five rows of holes and it didn't work well because there was sugar that accumulated at the top and the cup was too high so the sugar did not melt. Next, the cup had to be cut in 12 points like this. At this point with a nipper, every extension had to be folded inside. A little raised in the direction in which the cup turns, so that the liquid sugar is not able to escape out. Now the cup is ready to be installed. I was going to put it with the propeller below using washers over the motor, but first I prepared the bowl that must hold back the sugar splashes. The bowl is going to be held by the same pieces of threaded rod that hold the tile. So I drilled the holes and cut the bottom of the bowl following the perimeter of the motor. Finally the project is done and we just have to assemble the parts. Because of the airflow that the propeller and the cup create while rotating, the temperature of the sugar tends to lower and it crystallizes again and stacks. What should be done is the reduction of free space between the cup and the heating element as much as possible. This can be done by cutting the stainless steel bolt. Other things to do are the increase of the temperature by using a powerful heating element and the decrease in size of the cup. That's all. Thanks for your attention and see you soon. Well, actually, I can't see you. So, hear you soon. I don't even hear you. Then, thanks and read you soon.